Do you ever find yourself wondering whether the president is the one who could bring about a boost of $200 for people who get Social Security? The solution can be found within the complex workings of the government, and we are going to reveal the reality that lies behind this pressing inquiry. The following is a gripping investigation into the depths of governmental authority and the fundamental question that has caught the interest of millions of people. Ladies and gentlemen, please get ready for this fascinating exploration. Can the President wield the authority to grant a $200 raise for Social Security recipients? This in-depth exploration will involve peeling back the layers of constitutional checks and balances, as well as analyzing the roles that the executive, legislative, and judicial branches play in the process of formulating policies that have an effect on the lives of a great number of everyday Americans. I hope everyone is doing well. We are pleased to welcome you back to yet another educational video from EasyCheck. You are currently reading your fourth daily news report and update on the stimulus check. I hope each and every one of you is having a wonderful day. Let's have a look at the office of the President of the United States, which is the head of the executive branch. As the person who is vested with the power to carry out the nation's laws, the President is the personification of the executive power that the nation possesses. The President, in conjunction with the Vice President and a group of cabinet members, is responsible for navigating the complexity of both internal and international affairs and he or she has a substantial influence over the policies that are implemented by the government. Nevertheless, despite the fact that the president possesses a tremendous amount of authority, particularly through executive orders, there are some restrictions that are placed on the executive branch's authority. There is a contrast between the legislative branch, which is made of the Congress of the United States, and the executive branch, which is responsible for enforcement. Congress is the principal legislative body that is responsible for drafting and adopting laws. It is a bicameral structure, meaning that it is composed of two chambers, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Representatives and senators, who are individuals elected by the people, represent a wide range of interests. Engaging in discussions on a wide range of topics, including social welfare programs like social security and taxation schemes. On the other hand, the legislative process is frequently hampered by political maneuvering and partisan deadlock, which makes it more difficult to swiftly implement legislation that is of crucial importance. The judicial branch, which is comprised of the Supreme Court of the United States and the federal judiciary, is the third and final branch of government, completing the trifecta of governmental influence. Entrusted with the responsibility of interpreting the Constitution and resolving disagreements, Legal precedent and constitutional rights are both protected by the judicial system, which serves as a watchdog. By issuing historic decisions and conducting judicial reviews, the courts serve as a bulwark against governmental overreach and constitutional infractions. They ensure that the values of justice and equality are adhered to. Let us return to the primary topic, which is whether or not the president has the authority to unilaterally grant a $200 raise for Social Security claimants. This question is posed against the backdrop of institutional checks and balances. Despite the fact that the president enjoys a significant amount of executive authority, legal limits and constitutional principles limit the degree of presidential power, which includes the capacity to issue executive orders. Constitutional principles also limit the power of the president. The president is allowed to enact policy directives and administrative regulations without the approval of Congress through the use of executive orders which are frequently referred to as instruments of presidential action. However, the constitutionality of executive orders can be challenged through the court system. Because the activities of the president are being scrutinized by the courts for their legitimacy and legality. Consequently, the authority to unilaterally reform entitlement systems such as Social Security continues to be a sensitive subject, despite the fact that the president has the ability to issue executive orders to address specific issues such as administrative procedures or concerns regarding national security. In addition, the authority to make changes to Social Security payments eventually falls within the jurisdiction of Congress, which is the legislative body that is entrusted with the responsibility of developing and adopting significant modifications to federal programs. Any proposal to boost Social Security payments by $200 per recipient would require legislation from Congress. This would require both houses of Congress to develop, debate, and ultimately adopt a measure that would alter the statutes that are now in place by amending the statutes. The legislative procedure, on the other hand, is plagued with procedural difficulties and political compromises.
which makes the actualization of such a proposition a formidable obstacle to overcome. Additionally, the constitutionality of instituting a $200 raise for Social Security recipients through executive action is open to interpretation and has been subject to judicial examination. On the other hand, opponents believe that any attempt to unilaterally reform entitlement programs goes beyond the confines of executive power, despite the fact that proponents argue that the president holds the inherent ability to handle pressing economic challenges through executive orders. It is necessary to investigate historical precedents and previous executive actions concerning Social Security and entitlement programs in order to provide a background for the argument that is taking place over the authority of the President. Presidents of the United States have struggled throughout the nation's history to navigate the difficulties of social welfare policy, successfully striking a balance between economic responsibility and humane governance. Beginning with Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal projects and continuing with Lyndon B. Johnson's Great Society programs, successive administrations have endeavored to broaden access to social services and alleviate economic suffering among populations that are particularly vulnerable. However, despite the fact that presidents have a great deal of leeway in determining domestic policy, the implementation of significant changes to entitlement programs requires the cooperation of Congress and the approval of the legislative body. This is demonstrated by the Social Security Act of 1935 and later adjustments. For significant social welfare reforms to be enacted, there must be support from both parties in the legislature and legislative discourse. Reflecting the democratic principles that underpin representative modes of government, taking into consideration the research presented above, the possibility of providing Social Security recipients with a rise of $200 provides a number of significant problems and intricate factors to take into consideration. But, the fulfillment of such recommendations is contingent on legislative cooperation, judicial interpretation, and public consensus. The President may push for increased social welfare benefits and economic relief measures, but, the realization of such proposals is contingent on these factors. This brings an end to the video for today. We'll catch up with each other at the next one. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you found this video to be beneficial. You will be able to see other stuff in the near future.